Boss! <laughs> Salute! <laughs> Boss, water! <laughs> there you have it. You like it? It's like 7 Up and Not Sweet. I like it a lot. Yeah, a little, <laughs> lemon, a little lemon in there would be perfect. Boy, would I like to go on and rate it because I don't work there anymore and they, they can't You're fire like, can't me. get fired. Can't get fired. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, we, we covered him. We were talking about Russ Regan and he passed away and uh, what Motown Records he was involved in to 20th Century Fox and then, yeah. and then you and that yeah. could have been his last big role. Well, that was, a, that was what my dad said when I first signed. He's like, oh, it looks like you could be his last big act. And really like, we didn't quite get yeah, there. Yeah. But at least he, he, he did give me a lot of helpful advice and insight. Yeah. And uh, I think just that he, he put me in the right direction. He's like, kid, just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, no matter what, just keep going. Just keep going, keep pushing and, sh <laughs> and uh, show up, yeah. as they say. Uh, let's talk about your influences. As a young, well, let's start when you were influenced younger. That you, how old were you when you started singing? Did, was it church choirs? Uh, um, yeah, probably. I was around uh, here. My dad, uh, my dad's shooting me a tip. I was eight. Okay. Uh, I think eight when I started like taking lessons and mm -hmm. kind of getting my feet wet with it. Um, yeah. And then I started singing in church choir when I was about ten. Right. Um, yeah. But otherwise, like, I grew up on Spice Girls and Backstreet Boys. And okay, yeah, I know your age. Okay. All right, <laughs> and all you and my daughter get together. Yeah, I have to listen to that. <laughs> yeah. That was what I grew up with, and then it just kind of evolved. Evolved, it, yeah. Um, As you got older, what did you start gravitating toward? What kind of artists and styles? I had a lot of phases. Like, high school, I feel, was summed up by Simple Plan and some 41. Okay, and, yeah. And yeah, sure. And then when I was around 16, I think that I, I really started to like um, Amy Winehouse and Adele, but her mm. first album, so I think Adele was super young too it was like with make you oh Go, she was make you 21 Go. i think or somewhere around there very young yeah so that that first album kind of hit me and in, in, in the feels and uh in one house yeah in one house adele and then i really started to gravitate to gavin degraw okay he, he's i felt like he was kind of under the radar he was really popular for for a long time and he's and he still is just um he's not always on commercial radio or anything yeah uh yeah i think those three kind of kind of did it for me you still stick with it yeah as far as they go yeah what? I would say so I, I listen to a lot of stuff but I don't uh, I just what's your main genre of music that you listen to is it just basically mainstream pop no actually I love uh, rock country Oh, like my my Spotify playlist is usually like the hot country playlist. <laughs> I'm listening to the latest country. You know, countries. you know, it's funny because a friend of mine in Warner Music, Donald, uh, told me Montreal's the only city. Uh, K103 in Ottawa, they do country on the weekends, but there's no mainstream. And he says, and I'm I've been finding out in the last what, few years how many young people your age, twenties and thirties, even late teens, they're all going to country. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of art, and there's a lot of good talent there. There really is, especially local too. We have a lot of really good, like yeah. good country bands that haven't really found a good way to get out there because yeah. there's not enough avenues at the moment and locally. But it's there if it's you look there. for it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, social media. Let's talk about that. We touched on it a little bit earlier. With it, now that you're taking care of your own business and that, how much? Time, first of all, uh, do you do you have someone assisting you with the social media, or are you doing it all yourself? I'm doing it all myself. How, how much time does it take a week or a day? I mean, you have to be on it constant on yeah. top of it, really, right? So I think what really helped was understanding each platform first right. and what the point of each one was. So I started to kind of tidy it all up, where Facebook became my page for updates. Yeah. My website is kind of something that you update when there's like a major change happening. So once yeah. in a while. Yeah. Facebook, something you should maybe keep up to date with once a week, maybe twice a week. Uh, and then finally Instagram, which is kind of more of like a look into my life. So that's something that I'll be active on every day. Right. Um, I never really got into the whole uh, Snapchat or uh, and TikTok. I had a phase over a quarantine, but like I didn't really, I just found it. I don't see that. I didn't really get it. Like it, it's just it's a lot of time to invest in a, in a platform that I didn't. I wasn't sure how it would directly correlate to making my music a success. Hi, I'm December Rose, and you're watching Jake Out Loud. Like and subscribe below, and feel free to share your comments so we can engage with you. I think with music, Instagram and Facebook are probably, I'm assuming, I mean, 
Twitter or do you use Twitter? Because from my understanding, Twitter, anyone under 40 doesn't use it. Uh, yeah, so I didn't. You know, if you're hitting in the younger demographic, right? I've had Twitter for maybe 10 years and I just don't feel like I ever really got anywhere with it. I didn't, I don't think I ever really understood its point. Yeah. So I, I kind of just stuck with what I got comfortable with and what I felt was working for me. Yeah. And that was mostly Facebook and Instagram. Um, you know, I'm sure I'll evolve in some other platforms, but at the moment those are working for me and so yeah. I'm just going to keep kind of working And those. you're building up a good audience with that? I think so, yeah. yeah. And just, uh, I think it's important to get the people that have been following to feel like they know me more, right. which is important, I think, in, in just kind of like de- developing those relationships. Uh, and then from there, just expanding. If it's word of mouth and... Uh, yeah, the stuff. streaming services, obviously, you know, uh, Google Play, I guess, uh, yeah. Apple Music, and Spotify. How, how many songs do you have on that are floating uh, through there? I have all my content on all those platforms, right. so there's about like 23 maybe releases. Really? Okay. Um, so it's basically since I released with the label, so about since 2015 to now, uh, they're all on there, yeah. Are they generating any money? They do. Um, I don't have access to all of it, though. And that's like more, yeah, right, because it's like yeah. some of those like legalities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't generate what people would think. Like, you know, having a million streams might generate you like two grand. It's not like, it's so not much. like, it's not, much. it's not real. If you want to talk about real money, like that's not real money. So no. Well, what percentage do you get? I hear it's like point zero point zero, zero 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 something. <laughs> and actually, Spotify takes a huge chunk. Yeah. You know unjustifiable like some will say I mean there's a lot of artists that they put their music there because they feel they have to not because yeah. they want to yeah you yeah, yeah. Um, you might have talked what are some of those struggles you see coming up for you for you and not only you but the music industry in general but let's start with you I mean you did mention some earlier you got the album that's yeah. coming out in the new year your shows have been uh, they've been rescheduled at all uh, um not all of them no yeah. like uh, there it's kind of undetermined yeah because right we don't know like if there's a vaccine if there is not going to be one and even if like are people going to be willing and unafraid to go out you know like there's i think people are like pretty scarred right now so, yeah so i don't know um so in the way of obstacles i'd say uh for now figuring out where what people's priorities are going to be like are they going to be consuming uh and if they're not consuming like what's what's the next step i think it's just going to be figuring this like cowboy kind of marketing and testing the waters everywhere to see what's well, going to work it's like they were doing with comedy on the, on the weekend just for last bit of driving show up at royal mount on the carry mm-hmm. and i'm still trying to find i only know like one or two that went there uh it was very expensive the, it's different for comics than it is for music. The damn truth is playing there in August. I see it working better for music. So what if they're in their cars, they're gonna launch air beside their car, they're gonna hear the music really well, at least be able to see something uh, like comics who have to directly connect and you know. Would you do a show like that? Uh, I think it'd be worth trying, for sure. Yeah, definitely worth trying. I mean, heck, uh, we gotta go with the times right now. Yeah. Exactly, exactly.